Welcome to Field Sports Britain and Happy New Year. Coming up, the Charlies. We present the greatest and the newest accolades in the shooting industry, celebrating the biggest, the fastest and the luckiest of 2013. We've got new stuff, we've got hunting YouTube, we've got Hello Charlie. We've also got some fresh announcements for our new shows in 2014, look out for those. First, I'm off to Suffolk, to one of its most ancient estates. Well, I've come today to Glemmer in Suffolk, which is très joli, gants tall and very pretty. Why am I telling you this in funny foreign languages? Because 10 guns have assembled here of eight different nationalities who all met up thanks to the internet. There are lots of languages on offer today, but happily we settle on English and we just have to fight our way through the accents. Now you don't get more English than the man who runs the shoot, Major Philip Hope Cobbold. You picture numbers, just follow the card across the top, drive number one to six. Today is all about a meeting of minds and the common bond between hunters, no matter where they come from. Yes, we hunt, makes it happen. Hunters basically, they have a similar mindset and uh, they're usually outgoing, easygoing people that, uh, that, are, that are easy to deal with and, so on, and they, they adhere to a, to a certain code of conduct and so forth. And it's, uh, uh, I think it's, it's been just fabulous just to, just to get, get to know all, all the people and learn how, how people uh, hunt in different, different uh, countries and what type of traditions they have. Here's a Finn looking very much the part on a traditional English pheasant shoot. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was in, in the instructions that we need to be dressed up for the occasion and so forth. And if you would have any national costumes that bring that with you. And since Finland, uh, even though we have a lot of hunters, we have over 300,000 hunters in Finland, but, uh, but there is actually no national costume for the, for the hunters because it's so, it's so prevalent. Uh, uh, pretty much all the farmers hunt and so forth. So, and, and I think, I think so it was nice to, to dress up for the occasion and, and we do formal hunts in, in, uh, for, for pheasant in, in Finland as well, so yeah. some, some good shoots. Although it may be minus 20 when we do it but, uh, and, uh, and have half a meter of snow, but still, so it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. After the second drive, the birds are presented in a very continental style, something the Major approves of. We used to do it at the end of each day, back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, didn't we? Did mm. you remember? Uh, was it before your time? Before I forgot time. you were born. What year were you born? 63. 54. Yeah. <laughs> Is this something you'd like to see again? The, the oh, God. are you recording all this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's why he's pointing my name, at you. My name's Ed Miliband. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like to see the English do this as well? Uh, it wouldn't, yes, but every, every country and every nation has its own way of doing things. Yes. I am principally here today to join Arnold van de Vivera. He runs Yes We Hunt, a site that brings together European hunters. He is a Belgian and a dyed-in-the-wool browning user. And even though it's had a bit of work done, well, haven't we all, his current browning is still the gun he bought as a teenager. A few years ago, um, I was thinking, what will I do? Um, will I buy a new gun? Because the nicer stock and, and with the nicer engravings. And then I said, no, 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 this is a, a well-working team, never change a winning team, so um, let's keep it like that. And so I kept, I would say, the engine. I had the stock changed and at that time I met uh, Nina Stankus through Yes We Hunt, which is a very, very talented uh, young German engraver. And um, she engraved it, we sat together put um, ducks on it and woodcock on it, my two favourite species. And as such, I still have my very first gun and I'm very proud of it and I like it very much. I don't think I, I, will, I will change. Browning is a main sponsor of Yes We Hunt and the Belgian firm has sent Arno to new 725 to try. So once we've prized away his old familiar, he can put it through its paces. I think it's a pretty nice gun and it mounts well. It should work, it should work. What's different is, how do you call it in English? It's um, flat here, where it used to be round before. But, I mean, it will work. It is nice to look at. It is connecting with the birds, and can you ask much more of a gun? A double. It's a good gun.
Thank you, B725. The man who put today's shoot together is Yes We Hunt's man on the ground in the UK, the shooting writer Graham Downing. Like a foreign exchange trip for grown-ups, he's been shooting all over Europe and there are no language barriers when it comes to hunting. Whatever language you may speak, we all speak the language of field sports and we can always communicate with each other. I mean, I've sat with people and communicated with, uh, uh, by making the calls of different ducks, you know, you say, uh, I shoot widgeon. Well, what is widgeon? <whistles> yeah, I know what widgeon is. For the last drive of the day, another Browning fanatic gives the 725 a try. I think uh, the Browning is uh, one, one of the best balanced guns I know. That uh, works for me because uh, the weight is uh, perfectly balanced for me and that's, uh, that's very important in, in shooting straight. So I think that, and the quality, I think uh, there is no, uh, no other gun that uh, meets the quality of Browning. So uh, why shouldn't I buy one then? Yeah. For more about shooting and stalking at Glemham Hall, go to glemhamhall.co.uk. You can see the Browning 725 at browningint.com and for Yes We Hunt, sign up at yeswehunt.com. And if you want to see some more Brownings with some British supercar bruisers, click on the screen up there in the sky behind me. Talking of bruisers, it's the glass George David Wright on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. More than a quarter of a million people turned out for the traditional Boxing Day meets, according to the Countryside Alliance. Among political leaders showing their support for hunting was Nigel Farage of UKIP, here pictured at the old Surrey Burstow and West Kent hunt. A leading Liberal Democrat and former government minister, Sir Nick Harvey, wants the law repealed. He says that people in rural communities ignoring the hunting ban could lead to a disregard for other laws, such as drink driving. It's nine years since Tony Blair banned hunting. Here's a high-speed flyby witnessed by a goose shooter. To the astonishment of the hunter, a kangaroo hops past his hide. What's really surprising is hunter Andrew Rice is nowhere near Australia. He is shooting in Oklahoma, USA. An evocative and acclaimed film about fly fishing is about to hit the big screen. Kiss the Water goes on general release on the 10th of January, coinciding with the new fishing season. The film tells the story of the reclusive and eccentric Megan Boyd, who lived a simple life in a cabin with no electricity or phone and just her dog for company. She became legendary in fishing circles worldwide for her creations of beautiful and effective fishing flies. Prince Charles became a friend and visited her to buy examples of her exquisite work. She died in 2001. Visit kissthewater.com. Staying with the movies and some of Bollywood's biggest stars are in court for poaching. Salman Khan, Sonali Bandra and Tabu are accused of poaching a protected black buck while making the film Hum Sath Sath Hain near Jaipur in India in 1998. US TV star Phil Robertson will be returning to Duck Dynasty following his suspension earlier this month for his remarks about homosexuality and race. TV network A&E said it would resume filming later this spring with the entire Robertson family. Duck Dynasty is not a show about one man's views, the statement said. The top wildlife viral video this Christmas comes from South Africa and involves lion tossing. A lion's about to enjoy a buffalo lunch when this happens. According to the cameraman, all the animals walked away from the encounter unharmed, if not slightly crestfallen. And finally, the top hunting viral video this season goes to two American fox shooters. Pete Caruso and Eric Martin from Washington State of Colbert spotted three coyotes feeding on what they initially thought was a gut pile until a buck rose up. The coyotes were chewing on the haunches of a dead whitetail, whose antlers were locked with a buck that was still very much alive. The two hunters and two other men managed to avoid the animal's flying hooves and sharp antler points, and unlocked the entangled antlers. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, music please. Where's my red carpet? It is The Charlies. The world of motion pictures has the Oscars. We are introducing The Charlies, a reward for our own efforts in 2013. A way to show you some of the highs and some of the even highers from our tireless film crews. This year, filming techniques and technology dominate The Charlies. They've allowed us to see light where there is darkness and where there is stunningly fast action, we can slow things right down. Thanks to night vision high definition filming, we have been mining pure TV gold in a way unthinkable with a standard lamp. That's a standard lamp, not a standard lamp. So our first Charlie is for the best night vision moment. And the nominations are... Cat vs Fox, one of our first night vision efforts. Here the Western River's electronic call brings in a cat, which is then seen off by a fox. Rubbish dump ratting. We see more than we'd like to, and the thermal imaging shows the true horror. And urban fox calling. We're at a children's playground, which gives us some fantastic results. Must be all those sweet wrappers. Nothing would have been possible without the night vision, so thank you, Darren, for creating it. And drum roll, please. The first Charlie goes to rubbish dump ratting. Happily, the rats aren't here to receive their prize, so we can move straight on to Charlie number two. Best slow-mo shot. We've had some fun and received applause and criticism for our slow-mo stuff. It is graphic, and when we review the footage, we always age-restrict it if we think it needs it. The nominations are Headshot Deer is the most dramatic image we have ever produced. It went viral on all media platforms, hundreds of thousands of hits overnight on YouTube, and 2 million 24 hours later via Reddit and Imgur. We'd never even heard of Imgur. This film might be graphic, but slow-mo tells a story. Next up, it's the FX Boss and the impact a high-powered air rifle has on a fox's head. We were trying to decide if it packs enough puff to kill a fox humanely. The answer is yes, and in 2014 we'll be using the FX in anger. Then we have the infamous Chromo, like slow-mo but starring Andy Crow. We have used it to explain shot pattern and lead, but little did we realise this red letter day on the crows was just the appetiser before George stepped in for the main course. George and Andy shot 585 crows and rooks and other corvids between them. Finally, it's the perfect shot, a specially commissioned piece of filming we did for RWS ammunition to show how their bullets work. And the Charlie goes to the perfect shot. It took weeks to get the right deer, a spiker, the shooter, indefatigable Roy Lupton, camera plus scope, all in the right place, in the right light, at the right time. This is not just a prize for dramatic filming by the Field Sports Channel team, but a prize for dedication to the cause. Right, let's stop blowing smoke up ourselves for a moment. Next is the Charlie for the biggest poser. The nominations are Billy the Kid, whom we filmed in America at the beginning of 2013. I bet he can't put a fruit pastel in his mouth without chewing it. The Browning Boys in their fancy motors, preparing to do the glorious 12th in style. But the winner is Ulf Lindroth, expert fox shooter and freehand long range shot. Here he's hitting a steel target at 600 metres. Top shooting, top posing. Thoroughly deserved. Next is the Charlie for the best POV, as we call it, or point of view. Sometimes it's best to look where the shot is going, and other times it's fun to see the faces behind the shot. First nomination is Andy Crow. We discovered that the human pigeon magnet does indeed close his eye when he takes his shot. The second nomination is Andy Crow. And so is the third. So just because of his beautiful blue eyes, Andy walks away with this one. Next is the Charlie for best underwater shot, and this is a straight shootout between me and David. I have been working hard on my underwater shots, bringing you this, a carp pond in China just after a rainstorm. And this, a sea full of lobsters off Barbados just after a rainstorm. And this, a salmon being played by Chris de Marguerite in the Morn River in Northern Ireland. Want to see it again? Hope you didn't blink. To make me feel better, David enters this shot of a boot. But the Charlie goes to David's grayling released back into the river Kennet, not far from where he lives. A worthy winner. 
Second to last Charlie of this year's glittering event is the most shocking outfit. Had the awards been created last year, Gilchrist would have walked it with some chafing. Expensive therapy has put that moment behind most of us, so we turn to this year's nominations. The Pearly King. I surprised David by introducing the programme in my special shooting badge waistcoat. The Human Leaf. Roy's ill-fitting ghillie suit is not the height of sartorial elegance. Neither is an even bigger bit of vegetation. Dom Swamp Monster Holtum is unlikely to attract the girls in this number. Bearing all causes alarm, and so here is a Jacoby in a jacuzzi. A shocking look. The Naked Boar Hunter. Well, we are torn between the original Naked Hunter Max and his young apprentice Dom. So for bravery and, well, barefaced cheek, the Charlie for most shocking outfit goes to sporting shooter editor Dom. Lastly, it's the most watched films of 2013, and the nominations are literally hot off the press, what with this programme going out on January the 1st, 2014. In third place, it's Hunting Hares with a Golden Eagle, where Roy Lupton shows his skills as a falconer on the Hares of Hampshire. In second place is long-range hunting, high-impact filming. We have been to five continents this year to bring you some of the most dramatic landscapes and quarry species in the world, yet, you ungrateful lot, you are just as happy with the humble British rabbit. Top of the Pops, the Charlie foremost watched film on Field Sports Channel in 2013, it is Pellet, Power and Performance, a hunter's guide to shooting air rifles, which had 1.2 million views in 2013, more than 1,300 likes, 500 dislikes and attracted 850 comments. We would like to thank Highland Outdoors, the company that sponsors the Pellet Power and Performance series, which sells a range of air gun equipment including Webley air guns, Nico Sterling scopes, Ridgeline clothing and Buffalo River gun slips and safes. We are the antidote to BBC Country File, and we don't mean to offend, just rattle the odd cage. And we couldn't continue to do it without you, so thank you for your continuing support. This is the Charlies, bowing out the old year 2013. And here's what we've got planned for Field Sports Channel in 2014. First off, it's fishing. On 10th of January, we are launching a new weekly show, Fishing Britain. Every week, we'll explore the fishing opportunities around a different part of our country and even further afield. As well as tips and techniques from experts like Howell Morgan and Ant Glasgow Jr., we'll be looking at the wider world of fishing, places to stay, record catches, news, traditions, and of course, the not-so-traditional. Also fresh for 2014 is Airheads, a programme dedicated to air rifles. Launching on Thursday the 9th of January and at twice a month, this show will draw on the knowledge of some of the best in the business. From field craft to kit reviews and news, we'll be catering for all levels, budgets, ages and experiences. Backed by the biggest manufacturers in the industry, Airheads will take air rifle shooting and filming to a whole new level. Both these programmes will have their own weekly newsletters. Have a look at our website for more details. Right, on with this show and here's what you lot have been up to. It's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello Charlie, my, my name's Tom Batson, I'm six years old and I'm out room shooting with my dad. This is my first wood pigeon with my 410. Bye bye Charlie. Charlie. Hello Charlie. This is Eddie Nash from Lamping Foxes and Lee Jackson from Wiltshire Deer Stalking out on a pheasant shoot in North Wales. Bang on, bang on. <coughs> Hello Charlie. <laughs> Evening Charlie. Up in Lincolnshire. End of a fantastic day on a fallow cup. All the best. And happy new year. Hello Charlie. I'm Morgan Howard and I'm out wolf shooting with my daddy and I'm my first of the day. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now to the wider world of hunting, shooting and fishing on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube this New Year's Day 2014 which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's start with Stuart Blair who sends me his video of him using a Theoban Rapid 7 and Nightsight NS50 to thin out some problem rabbits on his permissions. Faris Shibley lives in London and has sent in his film of eagle hunting in Mongolia. He spent some time living with the hunters in 2013. They ride to high ground on horseback and carry the eagle on their right arms, he explains. Now for anyone wanting a bit of Boxing Day schmaltz, here is the Banwen Miners Hunt Boxing Day Meet 2013 held outside the Castle Hotel in Neath. Providing armchair comedians like myself plenty of opportunities to make puns on the word catch, former Australia cricket captain Mark Taylor takes Andrew Simmons out into Sydney Harbour for a spot of fishing in this film put out as part of the publicity surrounding the ashes. Last year's news that. Now how we love TV networks with big budgets. It falls to BBC News to cover a Chinese ice fishing festival in northeast China's Jilin province. Thousands have flocked to an annual ice fishing festival hoping to get their hands on a lucky fish. We are driven hunting in Germany with a Dutchman in this film. It's well made and I found dozens of similar videos of people enjoying shooting in groups during the Christmas break. Here's another one. It's part two of two days duck hunting at Sabognac in the south of France. The filmmaker wants you to book some duck shooting with him but apart from that it's a lovely video. A little more stylish is Casa del Macho Montes Fantasmas en las Combres el Lance Final. This guy is after Ibex in the Teruel region of Spain close to Aragon where Cat Catherine came from. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like to do, pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube, or email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now, if you fancy checking out those films, why not look at these films? This week, the African barbecue hunter is back at Wilson Fontaine in Namibia. He wants to get a Hartman's Mountain Zebra in the sights of his Musgrave rifle with one of Namibia's oldest safari operations. Click on the link on the screen for more. Or click on this link to watch this week's Headhunter Chronicles. Jason Bruce is also in Southern Africa after four different Springbok. Jason is in the Northern Cape, once again using his elite bow to good effect as he stalks and uses the blind to get close enough to these highly sprung planes game. Well, we are back next week, and if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen, or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, or you can sign up for any of our newsletters for this programme, Field Sports Britain, for Fishing Britain, and for our new programme, Airheads. This has been Field Sports Britain, and I am off to wax my surfboard. <laughs>